For millennia, humans have roamed the Earth mapping the seven continents and exploring every last piece of land we could find. We have braved the coldest tundras and the hottest deserts, but there is a large part of our planet that remains relatively unexplored. More than 95% of the depths of the ocean remain a mystery, and there lies new possibilities that we have yet to discover. The ocean is made up of complex and diverse ecosystems. Some creatures in these ecosystems interact with each other in a system called symbiosis. Symbiosis is when two different organisms have a relationship with each other that they both benefit from. Coral reefs are underwater structures that are built by hundreds of tiny animals called coral polyps living in colonies. Corals have a symbiotic relationship with microscopic algae, which provide energy to help them build these structures. Hi, everyone. My name is Cory, and I am a coral polyp. I am just one part of a colony that makes up the Cabo Pulmo Reef in the Gulf of California. As a coral polyp, I have a symbiotic relationship with a microscopic algae called zooxanthellae. Zooxanthellae support us by giving us extra energy to help build the reef. As a coral polyp, I am a tiny part of the reef, but together we span over 110,000 square miles worldwide. Our cousins in Australia have built the Great Barrier Reef, which you can see from space. For millions of years, coral reefs have served as homes to thousands of different fish, sea turtles, crabs, starfish, seahorses, and more. They are underwater cities. Sea creatures depend on coral reefs not only for shelter, but also for food and as nurseries for their young. While we help these species in many ways, they also help us out too. Many fish help clean the reef by eating pesky turf algae that try to take our space and other predators. We don't just support life underwater though, we also support humans. Humans have always depended on the ocean for survival since the first people walked the earth. One of these ways is through fishing. I'm always seeing fishing lines where I live, but there are some places called marine protected areas or MPAs. In MPAs, people are not allowed to fish or collect coral to protect biodiversity. This is very important since a lot of rare species live here. Aside from fishing, coral reefs are a popular tourist attraction. People love to snorkel and scuba dive to see our beautiful underwater ecosystem with all the colorful corals and animals that live here. Coral reefs also help humans by providing protection against waves and storms. Our large underwater structure helps to absorb the forces of the waves when the weather is bad. Without these natural barriers, coastal communities are more vulnerable to land erosion and flooding. You're welcome. Different types of corals are found all over the world, in both the shallow and deep parts of the ocean, but they are sensitive to environmental change. Coral reefs need specific conditions to stay healthy, with just the right levels of sunlight, temperature, and nutrients. Underwater heat waves can make us bleach. So, what's coral bleaching? Bleaching happens when we are exposed to environmental stress. Let's take a closer look at what happens to us when we bleach. If you look around, you can see that some of my coral friends are very pale or white in color. This happens when the seawater's conditions become harmful and our relationship with the zooxanthellae that live inside our cells breaks down. Some of the things that can trigger bleaching are high seawater temperature for extended periods of time, high levels of sunlight, pollution, and disease. Despite how they look, corals don't always die when they bleach. We can sometimes recover after bleaching events. However, to recover, we need to find new zooxanthellae symbionts and the seawater conditions need to go back to normal. Many things we don't have much control over, unfortunately. The rate of coral bleaching today is the highest it has ever been. Scientists are working on creative ways to slow bleaching and rebuild affected reefs. One of these strategies is creating coral reef nurseries. In these nurseries, young corals are grown with the goal of transplanting them back into damaged areas to help regrowth. I have some coral cousins that are more resistant to heat, and scientists are researching them to see if their properties can be transferred to other corals. 
Coral nurseries are useful for growing these heat-resistant corals so that they can be replanted into the reef. When bleaching happens, we are left without the microscopic algae that help us make energy. To counteract this, scientists are giving us additives to increase our energy reserves so we can last longer without the algae. It's like taking a morning multivitamin to boost your health. Other methods scientists have been trying to slow down bleaching are to decrease ocean temperatures by pumping cool seawater into reef areas or creating shading from the sun. But these strategies are very expensive and are only possible in small scales. So what can you do? The main thing that you as the viewer can do is reduce your carbon footprint. This can be done through decreasing pollution and waste. Opt for a reusable water bottle instead of plastic. Donate unwanted items instead of throwing them away. And shop at secondhand stores. To help reduce emissions, turn lights and devices off when not in use. Opt for biking, walking, or carpooling instead of driving. And don't leave water running when you don't need it. You can also try to avoid buying things from companies that harm the environment. If you come to visit the coral reefs, there are things you can do to visit safely. Some sunscreen ingredients are toxic to coral reefs and can potentially harm them. However, we still want you to stay safe under the sun. So find a reef-safe sunscreen that doesn't have those harmful chemicals. And while you're visiting, please just look and do not touch. It is important to remember that corals are alive and sensitive. If you want to learn more, there are several organizations that are dedicated to protecting and saving coral reefs. Some of these are Coral Reef Alliance, NOAA Coral Reef Conservation Program, and Coral Guardian. You can even adopt a coral and sponsor its journey towards restoring the reefs. With your help, we can help preserve our ocean's greatest ecosystem for generations to come.